Okay, this is <clears throat> cost flow illustration problem number one. And we start out with some simple balances here. I'm going to do this on another sheet of paper so it's um, just so it's clear, okay? So you need to print this or have this out to work on. So the, what we start out with are a bunch of um, data for raw materials, work in process, finished goods, and then what's been issued to production, okay, that, we, that was given to us. And then we've got, got some more um, expenses. <coughs> And what we're really looking at is having to put together that looks like uh, sort of an income statement. All right, so you want to get that format in your head that we have. We have um, so fuzzy. Huh? Let's see, okay. I'm going to hit sales less. better, sorry, less cost of goods sold is gross margin, less some other operating expenses is net income. So we'll start out with, with our T accounts for raw material and work in process and finished goods. So these are three inventory accounts, right? Raw material and work in process and finished goods. And make these pretty long because you never know what happens in here. And the other thing I'd like you to do is add <clears throat> like an extra line, a subtotal line. It's like an extra check to keep from making dumb mistakes. And since you're not here to catch me, I need all the help I can get. So my raw material, my beginning balance is $15. Don't you love simple numbers? At, at um, 1231, our ending balance is 10 and work in process is a beginning balance of 26. Our ending balance is 16. And finished goods, our beginning balance is 60. And our ending balance is 40. Okay, so let's see what else we know. We know that um, they told us that issued to production, direct materials issued to production were $25. So that went into production. So think of Work in process is really production. <coughs> okay, so $25 came in here. Um, this is, this is, isn't long enough as it is. I'm going to need more lines in here. And I'm going to move my, my total down. 16. That's better. Okay. Indirect materials were five. I've got indirect materials here, okay, that were issued to production. So that means they went in a manufacturing overhead T account. So this five is an overhead for indirect materials, indirect raw materials, okay. Now direct labor was 55. So this is raw materials, or I'm going to say direct materials. Materials. Direct labor was two bucks. These are, is a really low rate. We've got um, rent, property taxes, depreciation, and maintenance, and it says on the factory. So if it's on the, on the factory, I'm just going to say that's various expenses, okay? That would be $68 that would go into overhead because it's a product cost. Um, selling and admin is $12. We're going to leave that for the income statement, and sales were $250. <clears throat> okay, so we're ready to go. If, if I issued $5 and $25 to the... Um, <clears throat> to the floor, okay, that went out into production, either into overhead or work in process, then this total is 30. If I'm taking 30 away and getting 10, this must have been 40, which means we purchased 25. Okay? <clears throat> sort of solve for that. That's how you can think about it. And for work in process, we know that... Um, I've got an ending balance of 16 here. My total input was, what, 51? 
51 to 253. Okay, 53 in my ending balance is, oh no, 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 it's not. You know what? We didn't put our overhead in. So manufacturing overhead would go here. I've got 5 and 68 in overhead. Is that it? Oh, no, no. We had direct labor. We had in, let's see. Oh, I know. Jeez. I goofed. This was indirect labor, so indirect labor was two. I'm just looking for the labor now. Indirect labor was two. And what was our direct labor? Direct labor was 55. I can just imagine everybody at home telling me how wrong I am. So that means our manufacturing overhead is 75. 75 comes out and goes into work in process. So now work in process has a beginning balance. Then we add a direct material, direct labor, and overhead. So now I've got a total of what? 5, 10, 15, 21, 2, 4, 6, 6, 11, 18, 181, minus 16. So uh, what would have come out? 165. Yeah, 16 plus 165 is 181. 165 would have moved over and gone into finished goods. Okay, so finished goods, we add 165 was issued to production. This is actually, those are our costs added. When I add beginning inventory and subtract ending inventory, okay, this gives me cost of goods manufactured. So this is the handiest schedule in the world, okay? All of your answers come out of these T accounts. So 165 goes into finished goods. So this becomes 220, 225, which means if, if that's 225 and my ending balance is 40, then I must have subtracted 185. Yeah, 185. And 185 is what came out of finished goods, and that goes to cost of goods sold. Okay. So now we're ready, we can do, we can answer all the questions. Uh, we could actually do an income statement if you wanted. Why don't we, well, let's answer the questions. The raw materials purchased, this is what's purchased. So that would be A, raw materials purchased right there. What are the prime costs? Prime would be direct material, and direct material was 25. Direct labor, direct labor was 55, so prime costs are 80. Uh, what was the conversion cost? Conversion, conversion, oh, that was, so let's see, prime cost, this is B. Conversion costs are direct labor, direct labor is 55, and manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead was um, 75. So that's a total of 130. That's C. Cost of goods manufactured. Here's cost of goods manufactured right there in the work and process T account. So that is D. Okay. And cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is 185 right in the finished goods account. That is E. And when you read it in the textbook, you don't realize that. Um, that all this information is inside the inside of the solution, or this is how it's applied. So this is um, handy to practice. Make sure you can do this without looking at any notes, that it's 100% in your head.